<laughs> Welcome to Video Church. Video Church, when we first began, was Utah's only all outdoor church. As God began to grow it, we, and when I say grow it, I mean by way of videos that people were ministered to by. And as God began to grow the ministry, I began to realize that it wasn't Utah's only all outdoor church, although that is true, but that it was video. It was video devotionals. It was something that God had done, God was doing, and God continues to do. I think sometimes we ourselves as human beings get distracted, get attracted to abstract ideas maybe, or abstract thoughts. Possibly, maybe the enemy could be causing it, maybe our own flesh, which is usually what the problem is. Or maybe we just need to, like the song said in Love Song, take a little turn to the left and see what that path has to offer you. Maybe take a little turn to the right and see if there's some light. Maybe sometimes we find that where we're at is just right. One of the things that we're doing in this video in Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, so long Facebook, <laughs> is we're addressing those issues that I found in experiencing this differentiation between video and posting what I have a talent to do. You see, I was born with a talent. I have the ability and the capability to write. Not only am I articulate in my verbiage with which I am able to communicate orally, but quite perfunctory, I'm able to write the same way that I speak. Of course, really, what that boils down to is I'm able to speak the way that I write. And in reality, I'm, it's very easy for me to write. I, I've written poetry all my life. I've written songs. I've written... I tried my hand at writing, you know, a play, and I wrote one. I wrote a musical, and I wrote one. You know, I mean, I did little things to see just what the limitations of my skill set were, but I never really used those in the ministry until Vidivo, and we came up with Wordivo. And Wordivo is just word devotionals. But the point is, God gave me Vidivo Ministries and allowed that to become Vidivo Church, and I became anointed and appointed. I became ordained is the word, you know, I became ordained, so I'm a certified, genuified, justified, rectified, whatever you want to call it, bona fide minister, a preacher. And that's what God called me, a preacher. Now, most of my life as a Christian, I've just been a servant. I've just been following Jesus and doing what I do, telling people about Jesus when they were willing to listen, helping churches like Calvary chapels, or sometimes some others like I ministered in an assembly of God. I ministered in um, Catholic Church. I worked in a let's see, a Baptist. Uh, let's see, uh, Foursquare. Um, trying to think, quite a few, quite a few different along, along the way. A couple of evangelical churches that were, you know, you can't really put them in a box, so to speak. And so, you know, I, I'm not really kind of stuck in one position until God called me a preacher. And when on that day that he called me preacher, I knew that, you know, my days of servanthood were over, that I was a leader. And that as leadership, then I had a higher calling, more of a responsibility, but an integrity that I had to maintain within the boundaries of who I am as a sinner saved by grace. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm any more gifted or anointed or appointed than you are. It doesn't mean that I have any better skills or worse skills or that somehow I'm extra special. Wow, look at him. He's got a beard. <laughs> Isn't it weird? Look at my beard, but don't be scared. It's only a beard from George Carlin days. If you don't know George Carlin, Google it. But <laughs> I'm aware that some stare at my hair. In fact, to be fair, some really despair at my hair, but I don't care because they're not aware, nor are they fair. In fact, they say all contraire. But a head that is bare is really nowhere. So now that I've heard to share, now that I've, now that I've shared this affair of hair, I think I'll retire, retire to my lair to use hair. Do you care? George Carlin. The hippie dippy weatherman. Some of us hippies, you don't remember him from way back. But without the humor break, 
I noticed that Facebook had shifted and changed, and a lot of things were good for other ministers, and that possibly I may have been hindering them from doing the work they should be doing or were called to do. And in a lot of ways, maybe I prevented them from being judged for not doing the work they need to do. You see, wherever a Christian goes, he's salt. He is the preservative of that with which is around him. If you place your name or your fame or your shame, no matter how it portrays itself to be, say in some social media, then you influence that media. If you stand in a crowd, that crowd is sanctified. doesn't mean they're saved. just means they're sanctified, set apart for God's purpose. If you find yourself, you know, in a school or someplace, you're the one that God starts from to begin to shine outward to influence everyone around you. So I kind of looked at Facebook and realized that it was more of a detriment this next coming year with the political issues, the social issues, and the changes that were going on in Facebook than what I really wanted to do with the rest of my life, as short as we know that the soon return of the Lord coming is going to be. I know I don't have many years left in my life. And I'm glad of that. <laughs> Let's get on with eternity. We got so much more to do. But I began to look at some of the things that I wanted to do, like finish up Zephaniah, which we're going to do probably tomorrow. I mean, not finish Zephaniah, but continue the book of the Vidivo Bible in the book of Zephaniah. And I began to realize that when I was most effective, I would record, gosh, maybe 10 or 20 Vidivos and post them on the Internet daily. And that was a short period of time, but they're still the ones that are being ministered and edited and posted and portrayed out there as a work of the Spirit moving in men's hearts and lives and affecting them greatly to seek the Lord while he may be found, to trust in the Lord with all their heart, to follow whatsoever the Lord tells them to do, to know the Word of God by the Spirit of God. All these cliches and ways that I've used the Word of God in what God has done in my life, I have communicated effectively and run the race in video to do that. So now we're returning to that. We're going back to what we do best and give it a rest when it comes to social media. Now I'll admit we'll be doing blogger and trying to fix up the Wix site that I have. You know, I'm I'm pretty much stuck with vidivochurch.org that um, is my registered site and pretty much my trademark is Vidivo. You know, that'll always be me. I mean, nobody else is Vidivo, but you know, some people have added something now that I look at Google. I think there's one or two that have used the word, but no, it's me. <laughs> so wherever you find it. But I wanted to mention that also in saying goodbye Yellow Brick Road, you know, goodbye to the Yellow Brick Road or, you know, so long Facebook is um, anything you find Vidivo really is me and I'm all over the internet. I mean, not just one video or one video site on YouTube, but I have probably 12 channels out there, you know, at least, that I've recorded some videos there and, you know, at different times used them to broaden the net, so to speak, that God had cast to touch souls and people's lives. Because at one time, the Internet search engines, the SEOs, the systematic way that... Um, engine search engines operate or optimize or look at your page to find them they weren't so effective in the old days there weren't that many or there were too many search engines and not enough standardization so in order to get the word out i opened up lots of sites and sure enough it worked you know i would move up in the rankings on google's search engine and other search engines it's pretty soon you could find me no matter where you went wherever you go there i am so to speak from another Buckaroo Banzai <laughs> and Adventures in the Something Zone. But now, being old, and I'm old, I'm turning age to an age where in the winters are a little harder, you know, than they used to be. I'm not working as hard outside as I used to, and it's taking more challenges to continue on in the web, you know, and to do internet ministry, though I am a network engineer retired, uh, not retired mid for money, monetary sake, but retire because I just quit being in those jobs. But the point is, it's been time now to just remember, recall, forth tell, foretell, share, care, dare, and to be there 
in Vidivo ministry to share the Word of God. The Word of God to the people of God, of the Son of God, Jesus. I know I skipped one somewhere in there. The Word of God to the people of God, by the Spirit of God. No, the Word of God by the Spirit of God to the people of God, of the Son of God, Jesus. In other words, there's a process with which you read the Bible that it becomes the Word of God. It isn't the Word of God when you first read it or hear it. It has to become a part of your life in order for it to be the Word of God. And there's only one way that the Bible becomes the Word of God, and that's by the Spirit of God. And as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And I know I'm a son of God. I don't have a problem with that. Jesus spoke to me and speaks to me, and I've been relating that in video for a long, 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 long time now. And if God doesn't speak to you, Get rid of some of the crap that's in your life and get it out of your ears and your eyes and your nose and your mouth and start seeking the Lord and you'll find out God will be found if you seek him. But let's be honest. The majority of you, no. You're not seeking the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength or even with your baby finger. You just want to be able to thumb it and find God. Well, that's why we put it out there. When it's time and you're in desperation, then you'll hear God speak. <laughs> Till then, Suck a thumb. I mean, that's the way it's working. So, pardon me, but, you know, I frankly don't care if you go to hell. I care if you go to heaven. You see, if you go to hell, that was your choice working at it to get there. But I care if you get to heaven because I want you there. And I care that you learn to be so spiritually minded you're all earthly good and bring others with you. So that's why we're saying goodbye Yellow Brick Road, because we're not living in the fantasy land of Facebook anymore. I mean, Facebook has a ministry, and I have, I have the gifts of the Spirit to operate there. But there's a price to pay, and it's just something that I've looked at the cost and said, no, thank you. Hopefully, on the Mississippi River, we'll be able to record, you know, 60 or so videos, you know, and I'm hoping to record them as a Mississippi River preacher which is kind of my new shtick. Hey, I got a new new shtick going. But, you know, I mean, that's still Vidivo Ministry, still Vidivo Church. So, I wanted to use this intro and this expo to kind of get you to let you know that I'm no longer going to be on Facebook. I'm no longer there. I don't care. You know, it's like, there is nothing that keeps me there. But, you know, there's a interesting scripture that God has given that I like to read, especially when I can find it, that reminds me of where my priorities are, that helps me to yeah, that helps me to know the way that I should go. So, I'm going to share with you my own you know, just flipping through Psalm 142 so that we have at least, you know, some word in this for the leaving of Facebook and the shining forth of Vidibo and, you know, christening of YouTube again so that we can get Zephaniah. I mean, I have, I have so many different channels or what do they call them? Topics on just this channel, Michael James Stone. I think that's what we're recording this one on that um, I'm going to go through and just continue to add to them, you know, and not to, you know, get off track, hopefully, and just add, you know, a variety of them so people will know the channels and they can check back and, you know, go forward and back and all over the place, wherever they go, with video. So, in this, the word of the Lord came to me. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Sounds like some Pentecostal preacher, doesn't it? I am not Pentecostal. Just because God spoke to me doesn't mean that I'm Pentecostal. I look at it as God speaks to everybody. It's just a question of whether you're listening or not. I cried unto the Lord with my voice. With my voice unto the Lord did I make my supplication. I poured out my complaint before him. I showed before him my trouble. In other words, I let him know exactly where I'm at. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then you knew my path. In the way wherein I walked, have they sneakily, privily, or have they obviously laid a snare for me. I looked on my right hand, and behold, there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. I cried unto you, O Lord. I said, you are my refuge. You 
are my portion in the land of the living. Attend unto my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. Bring my soul out of the prison, that I may praise thy name. The righteous shall compass me about, for thou shalt deal bountifully with me. Now, I happen to live in a city called Bountiful, so it's kind of interesting, the scripture. But I read Psalm 142. Try to think what year this is. Is it 2016? Uh, let me think about this for a minute. 2016. So, 40 years ago, I read this psalm. And maybe 40, 38 years ago, it became so real to me that it kept me from killing myself. Yeah, killing myself. Oh yeah, I've tried to kill myself. I mean, haven't you? <laughs> Guess it didn't work for you if you're still listening. <laughs> didn't work for me. But God stopped me a couple times in my life where, you know, I just figured, hey, you know, with what I was going through, go oh, yeah, it'd be merciful to kill me off. I mean... I was down to like maybe a maybe hundred. I was down to maybe eighty-nine pounds, you know, just a stick of a figure. I uh, was running fevers consistently, you know, out there, you know, beyond the <laughs> safe zone for having brain functions. Um, always lost so much blood that they always gave me tons of IVs, you know, for blood, and then they pumped veins, my put IVs in my heart for veins to put intralipids in. And anyways, I had been spending quite a few months at a time in the VA hospitals. You kind of, once you go into a VA hospital once, that's one thing, to spend a couple months. But when you're out only for a week or two or maybe a month and then you're back in the hospital, over the years, you become what they call institutionalized. You become really kind of like, man, it gets to you. When I spent more time in the hospital than I did out of the hospital, I began to think of dying. You know, and even though I was a born-again Christian, it was, you know, pretty hard on me. Because like the scripture says in verse 4, I looked on my right hand, and behold, there was no man that would know me. I never had Christians visit me in the hospital. I called the church, I'm sure, or the church knew I was in the hospital, but they were in the Jesus movement. It was kind of like everybody was going their different ways. Keith Green wrote a song that kind of convicted us all, and I know what it's all about because I was one of those people that never had anyone. I listened on the radio and I could hear Chuck Smith. I had been to a park, been going to his church every time I was out of the hospital, and I spent years going to the church, but as far as anybody coming to find me or to see me, no. As a matter of fact, almost 25 years as a Christian, no one looked after my soul or came to find me. Finally, a man named John Lingy in Klamath Falls, Oregon, when I was going attending a church called Klamath Christian Fellowship, which was a offshoot of John Corson's church, started by a young pastor in his first pastorage named Bob Langfield, then he had a lot of people around him that were mature, spiritually mature. John Lingy was one of them. John Lingy used to come over to my house and pick me up for prayer that we would meet in the mornings before church and before business and everything, and we would get together and pray, you know, for the community. He, of all people, after being a Christian for so long and ministering and doing all kinds of things, was one of the ones that actually visited me. Kind of screwed up this scripture, but... <laughs> Very few have ever, would I dare to say, are my personal friends. Not many. God kept me solo so that I could be personally involved with him. And I have over the years. I've learned to develop this relationship that God chose me to be with him. So he did keep people at a distance somewhat. And I guess maybe my nature is to kind of, you know, people don't really understand me completely. So they pull away or pull back. But that's what I wanted to share with you about Facebook is that there are many people that always said to me certain things that, you know, I don't hold against them, but they would say them and, not do them. They would offer them and not follow through. They would be all kinds of things and yet not do what they said with their mouth they would do. That's probably why saying goodbye to the yellow brick road isn't hard for me. Because most people that are living a cyber life are fantasizing their Christianity. 
They are living vicariously in a way that God never intended them to because it's a deception for them. Not to be on Facebook and not to get Bible studies and read devotionals, but their response to them is questionable if they're not doing what they're reading. If they're not being what they're deceiving. In other words, if they're portraying themselves as some prophet on Facebook, dare I say in real life, they better be a prophet from more than Facebook. If they say they are a teacher or a minister and they say that they believe in love, then let me come along and slap you in the face and see how much you love. Because the reality of love is only demonstrated when you've been offended or when you've been hurt or when you've been stomped on or romped on or, may I add, crucified. Because until you're crucified, you won't know whether you love someone or not. You'll pretend and contend that you are a loving person. But I got news for you. Except it be from the Spirit of God, you can't love a person. Not really. You can like them and you can lust for them and you can have all kinds of emotions about them. But you don't have love. Not what God said love is. Oh, you know, we say, I love you like a boyfriend. I love you like a husband. I love you like a wife. I love you like a mother. I love you like a father. But no one loves like God does, do they? So you see, to return to that with which I know is true is easy for me. To rejoice in giving voice to that with which God has expressed in my life is, oh, so wonderful that I just get excited, though I stand alone. When it comes to knowing God, you'll find that if you pursue after Jesus with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and want him more than you want life itself, you'll find yourself all alone. But on the day that Jesus makes up his crown, the day that Jesus says he would be found, the day that they know that the sky will start to fall, Jesus will give the call and bring you home.